Wilkenhof. This is a Stellenbosch University residence that many people know. It stands as one of the longest standing men's residences, purportedly still adhering to its original ethos, a foundation steeped in institutional racism and white supremacy. Its alumni include some of South Africa's wealthiest, most famous, and most influential figures. Yet the true narrative of this building has remained largely untold for nearly a century. Regarded as a bastion of white Afrikaner identity, Wilgenhof instills fear in many students in its vicinity. The tale I'm about to share is not new to locals. It is the real story of Wilgenhof, shedding light on its complex history and legacy. An investigation by News24 has uncovered over 30 photographs taken during an unanticipated audit by the university's administration of two clandestine chambers at the Wilgenhof residence. Within these rooms, staff stumbled upon various items that, as stated by the university in a recent release, require further examination to comprehend their nature and context. Among the unsettling discoveries were crude illustrations depicting scenes suggestive of male sexual assault, ominous black hoods, and a hazardous concoction of linseed oil and aloe crystals purportedly intended to induce severe diarrhea. These findings emerged from the depths of two rooms within Wilgenhof. Furthermore, confiscated from the residence was an indemnity form signed in 2023, granting a private company, founded by former Wilgenhof residents, authorization to conduct boot camp style exercise programs carrying inherent risks of injury and even death. One particularly disturbing photograph captures a room adorned with graffiti-covered walls and ceiling, identified by News24 as a strafkamer. Within this space, a vehicle tire, a small wooden table, a wine barrel, and scattered paint cans lay strewn about, painting a grim picture of the room's environment. In another room, the number 88 was prominently painted in black above the doorframe, and also appeared on several drawings found within. The exact significance of this number is yet to be determined by the university's ongoing investigation. However, it's widely recognized as a symbol associated with white supremacy, with its letters often abbreviated to represent a Nazi salute. Additionally, photographs reveal black triangular hoods, reminiscent of those worn by members of a known white supremacist group, each adorned with the number 88 in white paint. These hoods were reportedly worn by the Naglite, Wilgenhof's student disciplinary committee. A photograph titled Wilgenhof Nagligte 2020 21st Inches depicts 11 committee members with a pig's head placed on the floor in front of them, further hinting at the troubling atmosphere within the residence. University authorities also confiscated several graphic sketches depicting scenes of male sexual assault, as well as an image portraying oral sex. Another confiscated item was a black and white photograph showing a naked male student carrying another student on his shoulders. News 24 went as far as obtaining a photograph revealing a used condom and broken eggshells, along with another displaying a large board documenting student initiation practices spanning several decades. Also seized was a two-page indemnity form signed by a student on August 23rd of the previous year. This document, which included the student's mother's telephone number, outlines the risks associated with participating in intense boot camp style exercise programs conducted by a private company linked to a former Wilgenhof student. Participants were warned of potential injuries, adverse effects from ingesting harmful substances, and the possibility of death. The programs, known as the Long-Term Plan, were allegedly organized by Abelobo Rentals, led by Wilgenhof alumnus Patrick Kilborn. When approached by News24, Kilborn declined to comment subsequently removing references to Wilgenhof and his company from his LinkedIn profile following the inquiry. A student informed News24 that the university conducted a surprise inspection at the residence last Monday after a staff member received an anonymous tip-off regarding two suspicious rooms in Wilgenhof that are always locked. He said, The staff members had to break down the doors of these two rooms, and what they found was truly horrific. The first room contained used condoms, broken eggshells, writings on the walls, and masks used by the Naglite Disciplinary Committee while disciplining students. They also discovered a suspected concoction of cement and linseed oil fermenting. Paul Joubert, 
a sociology student at Stellenbosch in 2020, described Nightlights, or alternatively DK, as an unofficial disciplinary committee. In an article titled The Truth About Wilgenhoff, he reported witnesses' claims that in order to maintain discipline in the residence, it is still a practice for members to dress up in black Ku Klux Klan uniforms and administer punishment as they see fit to any resident who they feel has transgressed the official or unofficial code of the residence. Hubert alleged that the punishment reportedly always took place past one o'clock and has taken the form of dragging residents out of their beds, beatings with broken glass bottles, being forced to give humiliating speeches, admitting guilt while naked, and performing extremely punishing physical activities for hours on end. He also mentioned the Fleisfees, meat festival practice, in which first-year students are also thrown with paint and made to eat a disgusting aloe and linseed oil concoction. A former Stellenbosch student told News24 that when she was studying at the university years ago, she once walked into the Wilgenhof courtyard at night to look for her boyfriend. Late at night, I saw two people with long coats and sharp pointed hoodies outside one of the first year students' rooms. They resembled the Ku Klux Klan. I became frightened and left because I understood it was something I shouldn't have witnessed. When I asked my boyfriend about it later, he dismissed it, claiming I must have been mistaken and that nothing of that sort exists at Wilgenhof. Those visuals have stayed with me. They frightened me. Following the discovery, Stellenbosch University released a statement acknowledging the grave nature of the articles and documentation found in the two rooms. While the articles suggest unacceptable practices in the residence, SU cannot elaborate on the details at this stage. The material is undergoing a thorough review by a panel, which will advise the university on further appropriate actions. The university reiterated its commitment to upholding the human dignity of all students, affirming its ongoing efforts to eliminate unacceptable practices from campuses and residences. In response to the university's statement regarding items of concern found in two rooms of the building, the Wilgenhof Alumni Association addressed alumni in a letter. It said, The items were discovered in an archive dating back over 100 years, constituting a part of Wilgenhof's preserved history. Recognizing the potential for certain contents to be misunderstood, or cause offence without proper historical context, we have offered to provide necessary clarification to Stellenbosch University. However, as we have not yet reviewed the archive materials, we cannot comment comprehensively on their contents. The letter failed to address recent items, such as a photo of the 2020-21st Snaglita, or the indemnity form signed with a private company in 2023. Additionally, it mentioned that the association had conducted a cultural renewal program in 2020, resulting in significant and tangible improvements to the welcoming of new students. Shortly after this disclosure, Professor Deresh Ramjuganath, the institution's Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Learning and Teaching responsible for student affairs, stated in a communication to university staff that during the audit, staff encountered items in two rooms at the residence that require consideration to grasp their nature and context before deciding on further steps. The statement reads as follows. In line with our continued adherence to the principles of good governance, a team of people will consider the items and make recommendations to executive management regarding the appropriate next steps in dealing with this matter. Despite this past that has been revealed, no one is willing to come forward to corroborate any of the information. And the website of the residence laments that it was founded on the principle of respect. I guess we can all agree that there is nothing respectful about all of this.